Hi, I'm Daphne Richards. Our question this week goes all the way back to our late season frost, which damaged quite a few plants. Most of the questions that we got involved tomatoes that were planted a little early, as we were all excited, but the early warmth tricked us into planting before it was quite time. Although I didn't plant my tomatoes early, I did make a different rookie mistake and got some frost damage in my yard on some established trees and shrubs. I got quite a few calls from people with similar damage, so I thought I'd use my own tree as an example. Frost damage on trees is not really all that common since our temperate zone deciduous trees can tell time quite well. They click off the hours of cold they've received along with the hours of daylight, which increase with the coming spring. They do this in order to know what time of year it is. Now back to my rookie mistake. I fertilize my plants too early. My landscape's very young and a little raw, so I'm impatient for growth, especially since the high temperatures and lack of rainfall since my arrival in Austin four years ago have hampered my progress. I really thought that my landscape would be close to done by now, but instead, I only have two beds, a row of wax myrtles and a gorgeous Monterey oak. In my impatience to kickstart my shrubs and trees into high gear, I fertilized them a little too early, three days before the frost, in fact, causing the tender new growth to shoot out and be extremely vulnerable when Old Man Winter visited for the last time this spring. I was so in shock when I first noticed the damage that I thought it might be a disease, which is what most people thought. But if you'll look closely, only the new leaves were damaged, not the older, tougher leaves, and not the stems. Any sort of tip invading disease would have not only caused burn symptoms on the new leaves, but also on the tender developing stem. That would have caused the stem to be discolored and I would have seen obvious dieback. Although I'm disappointed at the frostbite, you can see that the plant is already recovering by breaking new buds, which will create all kinds of new growth. And actually, that'll make my tree more full and lush, which will hopefully look much nicer in the long run. Our plant this week is globe amaranth, Gomphrena globosa also known as bachelor's buttons. This plant's been a garden mainstay and a gardener's favorite for years, but recently some new colors were developed by the researchers at Texas A&M. Before these plants were released, I was lucky enough to be given some to trial in my garden, and I can report that they are indeed fabulous. In fact, they were declared Texas superstars in 2012, meaning that they've been extensively trialed and shown to be super tough in most Texas landscapes. The plant trials coincided with the summer of 2011, the hottest on record, and those little plants just kept on going and blooming like crazy. In addition to newer, deeper colors, taller plants were also developed. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit us at klru.org ctg with your questions and plants of the week from your garden.